listen to the adventure on Pumlet on W4CY Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Hype Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Hype Man. This is the Pipe Man here on the Adventures Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm here with... Austin Mead. I love how you do that. <laughs> That's why I always let you do it, because I love how you do that. Welcome to Rocklahoma, man. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, we're out here in the sticks. Yeah, we are. Do you just love this festival or what? Uh, yeah, this is our second or third time to play it, I think. I, yeah. like, that we're, I like that we're close to home. So that's cool. I mean, I say close to home. We're only like 12 or 14 hours, but... That's close to home when you're an artist. It's closer than Sacramento or Florida, but I do miss Florida, man. I haven't been there since, I guess, well, three months ago. Yeah, right? (laughs) I don't remember if I asked you there, but did you actually drive on the Speedway at at Rockville? Yeah, just for a minute, yeah. Obviously not on the hard curves, but on the flat spot you have to drive in, yeah. It's a trip, right? To be able to drive. Uh, yeah, we they don't let you go very fast, but you know, yeah. you're there. I asked Christine, who runs media here last time, I was like, you know, I got my skateboard in my Jeep. Can I do you think I'll get my credentials pulled if I ride the wall on my skateboard? It'd be hard to do. You'd have to get it, some good damn speed. Oh, it'd be totally hard because even if you stand on that wall, you fall. Oh yeah. Just standing there. So What's going on with you besides Rocklahoma? What, what do we want everybody to know about? I have a new record we've been working on, so I've been dropping a lot of songs off of that over the last couple of months. And it's just, it's going to keep going. I've been writing a bunch. I think we're about to announce some more tour dates, and man, we're just staying as busy as possible, really. It's just a new chapter in life for me. Got got a kid and a wife now, mm-hmm. so learning how to do that, and just trying to support the family, and... I've got my dad working for me now currently, too, so I'm just feeling the weight of those things while traveling the country and trying to do it safely. Yeah. How's, it, how's the change feel of being somebody that's an artist traveling the country, performing, and now you're a dad doing that? I think it's pretty cool. I hope, I hope my son will cherish that, you know, traveling around with us. That's, I think, a pretty rare thing, but, I mean, it's a lot of stress. Yeah. Because, I mean, you go to big cities and dangerous places a lot of times and I've got to be on the lookout 24 7 and you know when they're little they're just so interested in everything yeah no so doubt. I'm figuring that part out and it's just it's tough to juggle right you know well, I've, I've been doing this for probably coming up on 15 years so it's just part of my life but everything's new and fresh to him and and the wife as well so they're learning the rugged part of the road you know What does the wife think about going out on the road? It's one thing when you, like, fantasize about it, and then another thing when you do it. I think she realizes how much I work and how many different jobs I do within the band. And so, I mean, there's some days that I'm I'm the tour manager, production manager, front man, like, logistical guy, and sometimes also the driver. So there's a lot of hats to wear, so... She is, she's helping me out right now, writing up set list, and nice. she's always willing to fill in on the spots that she can for me. See, it's good to have a partner like that. I think that's important, especially being a musician on the road. I told her at the beginning, I said, hey, I want you to come along with me for this ride, but you got to know it might be a little rough, and that's kind of the sentiment that started the song Happier Alone that really gave us a chance to do it for a living. So, I don't know, dude. I'm just living. There it is. And... I I love what you're saying because I I say almost all the time that people don't realize how much work an artist does. They think you just go and have a good time and party and that's it. And it's like that's that's the smallest part of the job. 
yeah, I try to enjoy days like this when I can see friends and talk to folks because there's a lot of days where we're in between the in between the highways nonstop and yeah. you know got oil and dirt all over us fixing shit and setting up everywhere, sweating, staying up late, trying to trying to be nice and entertain people and when people come out to a show or meet us like I really do want to leave a good impression and sometimes for those people it's like they've been waiting months or sometimes even years to see us if it's in a new sp spot and uh, I just try to be as cordial as I can even if I'm having a bad day, you know? See, I love hearing that too because we all have bad days. Yeah. But that doesn't mean fans want to experience those bad days and sometimes it's just nice to be able to know that you're acknowledged by the artist and they're not in a bad mood. Yeah. There's two sides of it for sure. It's, yeah. I, I do hate whenever... If I'm in a, a rush or have a lot going on, and especially if somebody's like super hammered and they're trying to talk to me, and I'm like, "Oh, this guy's drunk as hell," like, cool, but you know, it just there's an understanding on both sides. Like, I don't have time to go to your after party necessarily, but I'll definitely have a conversation. And some people get pissed. They're like, "Oh, this guy wouldn't come to my ranch yeah. after party." I'm like, "Dude, I would. I definitely would have when I was 21." Right. <laughs> right. And. You're right. They they have to see your side of it, too. And, like, I think they also don't think of everybody's wanting you to go to their after party. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you can't be everywhere. Yeah, I wish I could. At, at another place in time, I think I was trying to do that a bunch, but I'm at a little different point in my life now, you know? Right, exactly. What's the your favorite or what what's one question that never gets asked in an interview that you wish press would ask you? I can go a bunch of different directions with this, but as far as applicable touring knowledge for bands that are doing it, nobody ever asks about the mechanical side of traveling around the country or building up your contacts to like get you from point A to B. Like When your shit breaks down, who are you going to call? Do you know how to service like the basics of the vehicle that is getting you around the country? And Eventually, you get to a point where you make so much money where it doesn't matter. You rent or you call people in and they fix it immediately. But, like, you just have to have general knowledge of how to get around the world, yeah. essentially, which that's the biggest part that everybody overlooks. So like, oh, I want to be a rock star. I want to make music and tour. Touring is literally the hardest part. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I do a lot of oil changes. Nice. So, like, if you don't know how to do an oil change, you got a problem, huh? Yeah, and if you don't know when somebody's scamming you out of something or the, just the basic mechanics of brakes and engines and air and all that, then you better start learning. Exactly, especially if it breaks down and you're on a timing issue and it has to get done now. People oh. like look at that as like, that's a perfect time to take advantage of you. Uh, yeah, that, and you're usually on the other side of the country where you know nobody. Exactly. So you'd be stuck on the side of a mountain in a dangerous situation that's happened to us multiple times. Mm. And uh, what would you say the best question you ever heard in an interview was? I don't know. Maybe I haven't been asked it yet. <laughs> I like that answer. That's a good answer. Favorite tattoo you have? Or most meaningful? Um, or both? My hand is like a compass that's melting, and it's like a clock as well, and it's it's the clock is pointing to 228, which was our wedding anniversary for me and my wife. So. Wow. It's kind of a hidden hidden gem there, and then I have a jet on my neck for my kids, so, you know. I love it. See, yeah. that's cool. I, that, I think you have to hear the stories of people's tattoos, you know? Like, sometimes you can look at, oh, that's a cool tattoo, but I think the story's even cooler. I've got some dumbass ones. I have a New York pizza on my leg. I have a <laughs> little mouse that I, I can't remember what the term was, but we were like, oh, Rat Pack is what we used to call our crew. So they all got rats, and I got a mouse because I was a little different. So <laughs> mouse eating cheese. I love it. I, I, have, I have a uh, wood chipper on the back of my leg, almost on my ass. It's a wood chipper with the leg going in it from Fargo, the movie, because we were in Fargo, North Dakota. So, yeah, that was an interesting one, too. Nice. I like the New York pizza one because, like, I'm born in New York, and to me there's no better pizza than Just New York pizza. There we it is. We just do it because it's cheap. You can get a dollar slice. I'm like, I'll survive for a couple And they're days. huge. They're huge for a dollar. You could have your whole meal for a dollar. That's what we do, survive. There it is. Anything else you want the listeners to know that we haven't covered already? 
Show up at the Renegade stage at 335. Don't be late. That's it. And tell them all your socials, web, and all that so they can buy your merch, check out tour dates, music, uh, all that. Just look up Austin Mead or Howdy Fuckers. It'll pop up. All right. Well, howdy, fuckers. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Thanks for being on the Adventures Pipe Band. Cool, peace. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.